Let's look at this slide. Um, this is a very important slide for the understand how exactly do we do that dressing for cache. Given the m bit memory address, this is not a full memory address. I'm not talking about memory block address anymore. This is a, a full memory address. Okay, we have m bits. For direct map cache, we break, we can break down this uh, m bit memory address into uh, three parts. First, the, the gray parts. This is something called byte offsets, right? Byte offsets. Um, we have, let's say we have three bits, right? So in this case, for this specific example, we have three byte offset bits over here, right? That means the, the cache block size or the memory block size is two to the three. This is eight bytes per block. And we use these three bits to address each individual byte in that cache block. That's where we use the, you know, these offset bits. And we have these blue bits called index bits. This ones, we use these index bits to address or index the cache. Right? And the rest, the remaining bits, these upper bits, they are the tag. Okay? We use them as the tag. All right, just to make it clear, first we assume that our main memory is byte addressable. That's why we need this. Uh, and this part, these two parts, if you combine these two, tag plus index, these basically form the, the memory block address. Again, each block, right, in this case, have two to the B, or oh, is B is three, we have eight bytes in this specific example. Is that said, can you guys tell me uh, how large is the cache? How many blocks do we have in the cache? Any guess? We are using index bits to address the cache. Right. Okay, we have, no. Uh, in this case, we have, I think, we have seven bits, right? Um, is it seven bits or eight bits? I think we have eight bits. Right. Um, two to the eight, right? We have two to the eight, which is 256 for this specific example. All right. And with this uh, breakdown, we can actually define the key of the cache. Right. Uh, B, right? We have small b. This is the number of the offset bits. So this defines the size of the cache block. Then we have i. i means the number of index bits. This defines how many cache blocks that we have because we are using this to address the cache. And the total cache size right, in terms of data, it's this much right, in terms of bytes. So it's this much. We have these many blocks, right? these many blocks times the block size. All right, any questions? Um, how are the tag bits known? You already got it. How are the tag bits known if the instruction interrupts with the cache and not make memory? Um, very good question, Alma. We are gonna explain it. Okay, so if this is more or less clear, let's look at the a concrete cache design. Here's a, a, another example, right? We assume that we have a 32-bit memory address. It's a memory address, right? This is a full memory address. You assume that we have two bits, two bits for byte offset. That means we have four bytes right, per block. Then we have 10 bits, so this is index, 10 bits for index. How many cache blocks we have? 10. How many cache blocks we have? What is two to 10, right? Very good, 10, 24, see here. We have this many cache blocks right, in the cache, two to the four, okay? Uh, two to the 10, sorry, two to the 10, 10, 24. And the rest, right, the remaining 20 bits, so they are tag, they're the tag bits, right? 
So what we are doing is, so given the memory address, when we load, right, when we load the store, right there, we have the main memory address. Given that memory address, we're gonna extract these 10 bits. We use these 10 bits to index the cache. And we're gonna, we are gonna access one of the, one of the, the memory, right, the, 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 the cache block, right, in the cache. All right. Doing an give your index space again to x address the cache block, uh, and in this case, right, the cache holds again my screen is uh, lagging a bit, so uh, the cache has these many blocks, right? And each block has uh, a tag, right? Each data, each data block has a tag and a value bit, right? In this case, we have four bytes. Okay, what happens to offset bits? Um, good question, Amanda, we'll talk about it for soon. Okay. We'll talk about uh, what exactly is going on with the offset. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. All right, so first let's see. Um, let's try to read from the direct map cache. Here are the steps. We use the index again to Right, to index one of the, the cache lines. Right. You have 10, 24 of them. We first check, okay, we compare, we, we want to compare the tag. So in this cache line, right, in this cache, in this cache location, we have a data block, we have a tag store in this uh, associated with this. We check, we check what's so the tag from here, and then compare with the, the tag, okay? That we extract from the main memory address. If there's a match, that means uh, most likely we have a match. If the valid bit is also a one, okay? So that's where we also compare with the valid bit. If valid bit is zero, then we don't have, we don't have any, we don't have a valid entry. So that means the pocket is empty. If valid bit is one, that means the pocket is full. And that's where we check the tag. And coming back to that analogy, that's where we check the, the brand of the, the phone, right? So this is a read. Uh, then we get the data out, right? If we have a hit, we get the data out. Uh, you know, if we want to read from a specific byte, right, in this uh, data block, this data block, block has uh, four bytes, four bytes, right? That's where we use this byte offset to further extract the byte that we want from this uh, four byte block. That's where we use the, the byte offset. Okay, this is a read, a much more concrete example pretty soon. Again, my, um, all right, screen's not moving for me. You guys have seen the, the right, right? The writing here. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. For right, it's very similar. We also use the index bits to get the, to access the cache line. And we, you know, we extract the tag and valid. We compare the tag with the, the retrieve tag from the main memory address. And we check the valid bit. If there's a hit, then we write the data into the data cache location. Otherwise, if there's a miss, uh, there's one option. Uh, I think in one of the later lecture, I'm going to talk about other options as well. That's uh, in one of the options, we bring the memory block into the cache and then set the, the tag of the address and then write data into the cache. This is one of the options. So we'll talk about some other options with a different trade off. But um, in, so basically, in, in general, right? So when we access the cache, uh, we just have to, you know, uh, find the, the cache line and then compare the tag and the, the valid bit. Remember I was asking, do we need tri-state buffer to do read and write in cache? Uh, no, this is actually SRAM. You know, we don't, we don't need to, we have, actually have plenty of pins. Uh, in most cases, we don't need the, to use the tri-state buffer to, to share pins and such. Okay, 
All right, so here's a very concrete example. Um, let's look at the um, uh, direct map cache where we have four bytes per cache block. So how many byte offset bits do we need? Four bytes per block. How many bits do we need for byte offset? Two, very good. How four blocks index bits do we have? Also two, right? Very good. Let me just read, maybe you need two byte offset bits. So that allows us to address individual byte. And we have two inputs to address the cache locations, just four blocks of the cache. In this case, we have a memory address with six. There's a very small main memory for uh, the, the tag. All right, and just want to remind you guys again. So the six bits is a full memory address, but if you look at the, you combine tag, you combine tag and index, that's where we have the, the memory block address. We read out the entire block right, from memory, or we write the entire block to memory. So we do this kind of a block level transfer between the cache and memory. That's where we also care for the, the memory block address. Okay, so this is how our cache look like, right? We have four rows, addresses, and we have develop bit and the tag. All right, so let's look at the sequence of reads. Over here, we are reading from this uh, main memory multiple times. And this is uh, the addresses that we provide per read, okay? and we write it to a register. So these are set up. Okay, in the middle, we have the, the cache, right? So we just, on the right, this is pretty important. On the right, we have the memory, it's the main memory. And over here, over here, I'm only showing the, the memory block address. See here, okay, we have a six bit, right? Full memory address. But over here, I'm only showing you guys the, the memory blocks. I'm also only showing you guys the, the memory block address, which is tag plus right, index. That's just four bit. Okay, so this is set up, right? And uh, each block, right, is four bytes, 32 bits. So we also assume that each register holds four bytes. That's basically what we write to the register, 32 bits. Okay, so let's take a quick look. So let's look at the first line. We want to read out from this one, right? And initially, see here, all the valid bits. So we don't really have anything useful in the cache. So the higher B column is zero. Okay, with this in mind, uh, for the first hit, for have a miss or hit. Is it a miss or hit? Do we hit the cache or miss a cache? Obviously a miss, right? So the, the entire cache is sort of blank, right? We don't have anything useful. It has to be a miss. So that's where we miss. Okay. And what value do we read out from the main memory? So that's where we use the, the memory block address, right? The higher four bits. And we read out this entry, right? So we put 100, uh, right, this is one to the cache, we load 100, this is data block, and we stack bits, the tag bits are the zero, and we set valid to be or load 100 in R1 register. That's the, the first line. How about second line? Do we have a hit or miss for the second line? Hit or miss? Also miss, right? If you look at the second line, 
that address is also new, right? We haven't seen that address yet. There's no way that we can find it in the cache. That must be a miss as well. Also miss, but this time we are addressing a different cache line, right? Because we use the index bits over here, the blue ones, right? The blue ones are the index bits, which is zero one. We address this line, the second line. All right, so what data value do we read out? Which one do we get? What do we put into data? 110, very good. Again, we use the memory block address, 001, so which is this. Okay. 110, all right. Any questions? So if there are no more questions, I'm gonna speed up a bit. Okay. Uh, I'll just ask you guys to tell me whether this is a hit or miss. Next one, R3. When we move to the third read to read, we had a Is a new address. New address, right? We haven't seen his main memory address before. That must be a miss as well. Even though we already have two entries, we already have two valid entries in the cache. That's fine, but this is a new memory address. So this must be a miss. Okay. Next one is also a miss. And this one, since the blue bits, right, index is zero, zero, we are addressing the, right, the first cache line over here. And this is a miss because not because of the valid bit, it's a miss because of the mismatch in the tag, right? See here, in, a in the cache line, the tag entry is zero, zero, but in this one, right, in the main memory address, over here, the memory address, the tag is zero, one. That's a mismatch. So this must be a miss. Then we have the evict, right, the existing cache block, and then we put in a new one, in this case, the 140, right? And we update the tag. All right, next one, um, this one, hit or miss. Also a miss, right? Because this is also a new address. Okay. Same thing, um, but this time we are addressing uh, cache uh, row three. So this is also a miss. All right, and then we put below the right value, the 170, and we update the tag. And we set the value to be one. All right, next one. This is a more interesting case. When we read out from the same address, right? Zero, 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 it's all zero. We have already read, we have already read it once before. But do we have a hit or a miss? We have already seen this address before. Still a miss, right? Still a miss because uh, the previous block is already evicted. We still have a cache, and uh, we still have a cache miss because the tag does not match. Right, very good. This is still a miss. Uh, because the tag is zero one here, right, in the cache, but what we want is zero zero for tag. Uh, we have seen this guy before, but unfortunately at a certain point, this guy was moved out, right, from the cache. Uh, that's why we have another miss. Last one, hit or miss. Okay, finally, right? Okay, great, finally, last one. This is the last one. This is the hit, finally. Uh, we have seen this, uh, right, this address before, and this is not evicted. We have a match, right? We have a valid bit, which is one, and we have a match for the tag. Okay. These two match. All right, any questions? Um, Ethan, you can is still raised. Not for, for, this for the bonus round. Okay, that's fine. All right, hope it is clear, right? You know, this is where we are loading a single, uh, you know, we have a loading, this is a four byte, right? Four byte value into the cache. Uh, let's take a quick look at the, a different case. All right, Amanda uh, is asking, how about the offset, right? So where do we use offset? With this uh, second case, hopefully it's gonna be clear. Uh, I may use a uh, few more minutes, if you guys don't mind, since we lose so I think three minutes because my uh, uh, okay. Simple. We have a, a block, right? A larger block with a eight bytes. Actually, this is where we will use the byte offset. I mean, uh, okay. <clears throat> Just um, hold on a bit. 
we have eight bytes. How many bits do we need for byte offsets? Three bytes. Three, very good. Three byte offset bits. And uh, we still have a, actually the, the physical size of the, the cache is still the same. But now we have a larger block size. We only have two blocks, right? Then how many bits do we have for index, for indexing? Just one, right? Just one. Um, this is a typo. It should be one, copy paste, mistake. Okay. Um, should be one, just one index bit. I'm gonna fix that. And we have two attack bits, right? This is how we break down the, we are still doing direct app cache. And this is the, the abstract diagram of the cache. So see here, uh, I have, we, can, we have the memory block address. I have two entries, right? So this is for low, low four bytes, and this is for high four bytes. Since we have a larger block, right? We set total size. The only thing that's is the block size. That's it, okay? Since we have a change block size, uh, we have a different byte offset bits. And since we still have the same cache capacity in terms of the, the total number of bytes, now we have fewer blocks. So we have a one fewer index bit. All right, so let's look at the, the same example again. Okay. All right. Um, now things are more interesting since we will be using the byte offset. Okay, let's see. First one. Uh, hit or miss, right? The cache is initialized with, right? You know, a valid bit column of all zeros. Nothing in the cache. So the first one must be miss, right? Okay. And we look at index bit again, right? The blue one. We access the first line, and that's where we load in the entire block. Okay. But see here, the now that the block has more data. Right, because we have eight bytes now. We are loading in two things. Over here, I'm assuming that each one, right? So this is 100, this 100 number is also, uh, although this is a small number, but actually this occupies a four bytes, 32 bits. We just need to append zero on the MSB side, okay? And uh, we load the entire block, right? Eight bytes to the, the cache line over here. We update the tag. But the register only holds four bytes, right? So that's where we use the byte offset bits. So that's where the here are useful. The byte offset bits are becoming useful. So now we are at the byte offset zero. So that's why we load the low four bytes from the, the cache line. And then we put it into the register. Is it clear now, Amanda? Uh, Alma is asking, why do we take 100 instead of 110? Because uh, I'm assuming good question, Alma, because I made assumption here, right? I made assumption here. That's the, right? this one is low, this one is high. Okay. All right, this is the, uh, the first line, second line, hit or miss. Hit or miss. Hit or miss. Very good, right? It's actually a hit, right? Because this entire data, right? This entire eight bytes already in the cache line. And the tag also matches, right? Zero, zero, and zero, zero. We do have a hit. But now this time the byte offset is a four, right? One, zero, zero. So that's where we are loading this value from the cache line to the art register. Okay, so this is the, the second line. All right, one more question. Um, again, we are gonna be finishing up pretty soon. Right? I only have a few more slides. One more question. So if there are only two pieces of data, why is the byte offset three bits instead of one? Uh, again, I'm assuming that this one, these are 32 bits. 
30 to bit values. Okay. So although this is a small number, right? But I'm assuming that this actually occupies 32 bits, four bytes. Okay, I just based as pen zeros on the MSB side. That's my assumption for the setup. So that's why we use the. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm gonna maybe address some more question later. Right. Uh, let me just finish the slides. The next one is a miss. Right. So since it's a new address, right, we haven't loaded the block yet. This is a miss, and we load from this corresponding a memory block, and then we update the register. Next one is also a, a new address, right? That must be a miss. Okay, we haven't seen this block before. Um, and we, this is where we, we, you know, we load the second cache line, okay? And update the register. Next one, this is a new one, right? But this is not a new one, this is an old one. But again, the, the cache block was evicted at a certain point. That's why we have another miss because the, the tag does not match. Right? Okay. Um, make sure that you guys follow. If this is not still not too clear to you, make sure that you guys follow each slide and then check the tag bits right? and check the relevant and tag bits to, to make sure they understand whether this is a hit or miss. Okay. All right. So, last one, the very last one is it a miss or hit? Last line. Is it a miss or hit? Before we conclude, last one is uh, hit. That's the right. right. Okay, sorry. So, you know, we just need to update this one, right? So then we move on to the the last one, right? We need to update the the typeface. Right? I forgot to move my slide. Um, right. So the last one is a hit. Very good, right? Because if you look at the last one, we are going to be addressing cache line zero and we have a match on the tag, right? That's why last one is a hit. All right. Um, I think we are done. Okay. Uh, this is my, my last slide. Okay. Uh, Sheila is asking why is it a hit, this one? Again, you know, we access the cache line zero right over here, and then we compare the tag, right? The red bits. Okay, and there, there's a match. That's why it's a hit. Okay, all right. Um, again, uh, just want to remind you guys, right? No class on Thursday, and uh, the lecture next lecture is rescheduled to Sunday. Okay, I'll remind you guys again on Piazza.